an engineer, and I think I'm the first engineer to talk today. So who are the engineers in the house? Thank you. So when designers hang out with geeky people, they hang out with engineers. When engineers hang out with geeky people, they hang out with physicists. So when I was in engineering school, I had to take physics. And it turns out most people who take physics class in college are actually engineering majors. And so I had a physics professor in a TA um, in a recitation once talking about how much how physics is more important than engineering, and he used the Hubble Space Telescope as an example. And he talked about how you know, science gives us knowledge and understanding, and tools and technology are interesting, but really we want, you know, there's a beauty to this kind of core understanding of reality, um, which made me think of Richard Feynman, you know, talking about you know, um, physics is like sex, you know, I'll let you read it. Um, <laughs> But occasionally, you stop birth control, right? Occasionally, you want a practical result. Um, and so that was my thought and the rest of the engineers in the room, which is like, we like to build things. Like, sometimes it's nice to make practical results. And even taking this example um, of the Hubble telescope, right? Like, you couldn't build it with a lot of without a lot of engineers, right? So really, this is kind of harmony between scientists and engineers, right? Like, we use their stuff, and they use our stuff. We don't live in these, these bubbles, these cil cylinders that we talk about, like, who's better, right? Um, so as I pondered this and got more into working with you know, interactive designers, I tried to build a similar philosophy about how I think about design and art and science and engineering. And this is my first stab, this idea that you know, engineering and design kind of live in the functional level. And maybe there's some analogy, um, uh, analogy between um, the four things. And you know, as long as you make a pretty picture, right, you feel good about yourself. <laughs> And what I realized for the four of us, you know, artists and scientists, and engineers and designers, is we all like we're special and we should hang tight because we're very different in what we do. We're all about exploring the landscape. We want to find a solution, be it a scientific solution or an artistic expression or design or an engineering output. And finding that solution is tough. There's a landscape of possible things we could build, things we could discover. And navigating this, measuring this, is really difficult. Like, how do you measure if your engineering result is good? How do you measure if your scientific result is good? Like, it's a tough problem. And we're very different than the random like bean counters and pencil pushers and all those people and how we think about things and the problems we try to solve. So I think we should get together on this. And this notion of measuring success, I think, is also very important. Because I realized is, except maybe for science, we all struggle with how we measure success. There's more than one way to say, is this engineering good? You know, is it stable? Is it secure? Is it fast? Is it scalable? Um, versus an artistic versus a design output. And so what I wanted to do is actually spin my graph just a little bit and ponder it like this. Where if you talk about a scientific output or thinking about building something in science, like is it repeatable? Is it based on data, right? Like it's pretty easy to define like how repeatable a scientific output is. In the art or engineering realms, maybe it's a little broader. You know, a good engineering output has to worry about, you know, um, is it sustainable? Is it scalable? Is it secure? All those things. But when you get into design, the possible ways to measure a successful outcome are really difficult. You have to care about all those aesthetic human measures and also all those engineering measures around can I build this thing? Is it you know, is it economical? And so to bring it all together, what I end up thinking about kind of these four things is science gives us the canvas we build on. You know, what is possible? Whether it's like, what are the notes a saxophone can play? What are the things my compiler can produce? Or what's actually sellable in the market? For us to understand the canvas we paint on is really important. Art, obviously, is purely in the realm of emotion. And we just want to make something attractive or beauty, um, beautiful. And when you think about measuring it, really all you think about it is do people like it or not? It ends up being kind of you know, um, um, binary in that sense. For an engineering output, we can measure success objectively, meaning we don't need a human being to measure an engineering output. I think the best way to describe how you compare measuring an engineering output versus a design output is you can measure an engineering output without a human in the room. You can stress test it. You can unit test it, right? There's no way to stress test a design. You have to ask. You have to talk to a human being. In the art realm, it's kind of both of these, right? You want an emotional reaction. You also want a car that's aerodynamic and efficient. But you also want these more subtle things beyond aesthetic, which is, does a Mustang from this year look like a Mustang from 50 years ago? And again, very kind of tenuous and tough to measure. And I think for the engineers in the room, it's good for us to internalize that a Mustang is more than the engine. Right? And I think for us to think about this analogy when we write software, it's a good analogy. It's even more than an engine with lipstick, right? Like, it's a, a full package we really need to think about. And so, even going back to the Hubble analogy, right? Like, Hubble did amazing things, a great combination of engineering and science. But when there's a problem with Hubble, it was really expensive and really hard and really dangerous to fix it because they did not design it to be repaired in zero G. So it actually turns out like there's an interaction design problem, which is a thing you build on Earth. It's very different than the thing you repair in space. And so they really need a designer. But in the end, we just want to create something beautiful, right? Thank you. Thank you.